Our verse today is John chapter 4, verse 6. Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. We are very well familiar with the story of the Samaritan woman with Jesus at the well. Still, there are a few details that we may sometimes overlook. In our verse, there are some elements worth noting. First, Jacob's well. The Hebrew word for well is Be'er, which also means watering place, underworld, or a spring. Jacob's well is not mentioned in the Old Testament. The book of Genesis records that Jacob bought a piece of land in Shechem, which he later gave to his son, Joseph, if you read Genesis 33, 18 to 19. But the well was not mentioned in the context. However, Jewish tradition locates Jacob's well between Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal, east of Shechem and south of Sika. It is one of the holy places in Palestine today. My interest is the symbolism of the well. We know in the Old Testament that important figures meant their future brides at the well. Abraham's servant found Isaac's future wife, Rebekah, at the well, if you read Genesis 24. Jacob met his future wife, Rachel, at the well, if you read Genesis 29. Moses met his future bride at the well, if you read Exodus chapter 2. What is common to all these people is that they sit at the well after a journey, and while at the well, the future brides come to draw water. What is Jesus' experience at the well saying to us? Is Jesus going to marry the woman of Samaria? No, not at all. Instead, Jesus has come to wed humanity with God, the Samaritan woman being a symbolic representation of what Jesus has come to do with every human being, to draw us into union with God his Father. The second point worth noting in this verse is, Jesus was wearied from his journey and sat by the well. Sometimes we forget that Jesus would have been hungry, thirsty, and wearied as a human being. The Greek verb kopiao means to be wearied, tired, or exhausted. Jesus had a long trip and was physically tired. He then decided to rest and get some water. But interestingly, unlike us, Jesus' tiredness would not prevent him from doing the work for which he came into the world. His tiredness gave him the opportunity to draw a soul into union with his father. And finally, in our verse, we have, it was about the sixth hour. According to Jewish timing, this would mean midday, noon. It would make sense that Jesus was thirsty at that time. It was hot. However, that would not be the usual time for people to draw water from the well in traditional Israelite society. People draw water early in the morning or in the evening. Still, the Samaritan woman came to draw water at that time. Could she be coming to draw water at an odd time because of her lifestyle and reputation, which we see later in the chapter? Since she was married to many people in the past and she didn't have a good reputation in the town, we are not told. What is important is that Jesus is there right then to bring someone into communion with God. For us today, how do we respond to people when we are tired? Do we tear them off or still gather ourselves to respond to their needs? Do we often think that it is always an opportunity to speak about the faith and draw others to God wherever God puts us at any time? Or are we always open to have a conversation with strangers like Jesus did to the woman of Samaria? Lord, may we always avail ourselves to be used by you to bring people into communion with you. Amen. God bless you. I wish you a lovely day.